YouTubers. So this is a follow-up video on my uh, CPU, my uh, homemade CPU here. And so I have worked more on the computer. And I, um, as you can see here, I have some uh, deep switches that I enter programs uh, into the computer. There are so three of them. The first one is just uh, for control purposes. The second one is for address, so 8-bit address, and the third one is for data. So if you want to enter a program on the computer, there is a programming mode here. The first button here is a programming mode, so if it's up, it's in programming mode, and if it's down, it's uh, in running mode. Second button is the read, uh, third is write, and the fourth one is the reset. So when it's up, uh, the computer is reset. And so the clock is still working, but uh, all the registers are reset, so nothing happens. I don't have a, a, a button to uh, to uh, just uh, stop the clock, which is very useful, but I haven't uh, implemented that yet. So here we have uh, a crystal oscillator, which is 5 megahertz. Uh, this computer works at 5 megahertz. I think it's probably the, the fastest speed that it can work now. But I don't leave it running at 5 megahertz because it doesn't do much at the moment. Uh, so I have also here two 12-bit uh, counters which I use to divide the clock to get lower frequencies. So right now it's in a, a low frequency. As you can see here the LEDs are flashing very slowly. And the computer is working right now. And as you can see here, here is the, the first group of LEDs is the A register, the second one is the B register. Uh, here we have the instruction register, and here is the program counter. Um, and here, on this side here, we have the control word. Uh, so as you can see, I have put LEDs everywhere on the computer, and these uh, orange uh, packages here they are resistors so they have uh, eight resistors in each uh, each of the packages here so here are the the control bits this is a uh, uh, 32 control bits so 32 bits and these control bits they uh, control what the computer will do on the next rising edge of the clock so when the clock rises then registers will be clocked and written to depending on whether the control bit is high or low so if it's high then that register will input data on the next rising edge and if it's low then it will not input data and so the way the microcode sequencer works is on the uh, on the rising edge the address of the uh, the next micro, micro instruction is latched uh, then on the uh, falling edge this uh, the ROM, the output from the the ROMs, the control word ROMs, are input into a few flip flops, and this is just to make them stable uh, between changes of state, because if you change if you change the control word uh, when you need one of the bits to be stable, they will oscillate because the address of the ROMs is changing, so they will oscillate, and this is not good for if you're using. Uh, I/O devices, for example, memory, uh, and uh, con uh, the, the controls need to be stable uh, for 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 each work. Otherwise, the address could be could change, the data could change, and so on. And so, right now, uh, what I wanted to show you is that uh, some of the updates that I have done. So, as you know, this computer has only 256 bytes of uh, RAM and that's because I wanted to build this really quickly and that simplified things a little bit. And I used to have to enter programs via these uh, DIP switches here. And it's very ty tiring and very uh, error prone. So you can't, it's very hard to enter long programs on it, on it uh, this way. So what I have done is I have added, uh, so right now there are four inputs output ports here. So these two here, these two ports here are output ports, so they are flip-flops. And these two here, these two ICs here, they are uh, 74HC244 buffers, and they are input ports. So when the computer wants to output some data, it sends data to these two output ports. When it wants to input data, it inputs from these two input ports. 
So what I did is I added a uh, flash flash uh, storage right here. So it's an EEPROM, and I have connected this EEPROM to the input output ports. So when you want to, so the purpose of this is to be able to load programs into the computer's RAM in an easier way because like this I can take this ROM from here and program program is on my computer using a uh, ROM programmer so it's much easier to enter the hexadecimal codes into here um, uh, in this way so I don't have to use the DIP switches so the way this works is I have one output port here uh, two bits of which I'm using as the uh, ROM select the chip select here and the other one is the uh, output uh, the output uh, the out out output enable for this ROM uh, the other output port here 8 bits is for the address so that's the address is fed into here and the one of the input ports here is being used for the data outputs from this ROM so if you want to read something from this ROM you just send low bits to these two bits here to select the ROM then you send the address to this output port which sends the address to the ROM and the ROM will immediately send the outputs, the data, into this input port here so then the computer can read the input port and can read this data into the RAM so right now I have a ROM here and a RAM and I have um, programmed this ROM simply to be a program that loads a, the data from this flash here so that will be a program that is in here and it takes the program and loads into the RAM of the computer then after that it just jumps to this RAM and starts executing whatever program it found there so this is what I wanted to show you and uh, it's a much easier way of loading programs into the computer and so that's uh, that's it for now and you, as you can see here there's also a uh, keyboard, a matrix keyboard that I have got for the computer and I will be installing this keyboard on uh, maybe tomorrow it's a bit tricky to use this because it's a matrix keyboard so the you have to actually write a program to uh, read uh, whether the bits here are high and low it's not it's not simple it's not as simple as when you press this button here one of the inputs will just go high it isn't like that you have to uh, feed some uh, some voltages here and then read which one of them is low and so on so it requires a, a program to do this and now also uh, there is also an Arduino here which I plan to to use as a serial port to talk to the com to the other computer and also today I will do something that I have wanted to do for a while but which I couldn't because it was just a pain to enter programs on these DIP switches and that is to make the, the program, the computer uh, play music, 8-bit music. So I have here a loudspeaker, and I'll connect this loudspeaker to an output port, uh, along with a small amplifier, and the program will uh, generate some frequencies of sound, hopefully tuned, and then send the, the, these frequencies to the output ports and play some music. So I'll be made making a video about that in the future. So that's it for now and uh, thank you very much for watching.